Our beautiful sunny beach and pool days are a big reason folks on the first coast love to call this place home, right? But the plants are also dependent on our yacht rock weather that <laughs> they need to thrive. So here to explain more on the importance of planting native plants and their role in Florida's ecosystems is Stephen and his son Thomas. This is Genevine. Thank you so much for joining me. I should say Stephen and Thomas Genevine. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having us. Yeah, nice to meet you. So we've got a, a few different plants here, but first tell us about the wetlands and how important they are to our ecosystem. So wetlands provide a lot of functions that people can sometimes overlook, but you know, most of the, our drinking water is filtered through wetlands before it goes into the aquifer. They uh, also provide recreation. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful parts yes. of Florida's natural resources, and it's important to kind of sustainably enjoy them and mm -hmm. take care of them. So, you know, hopefully people can learn to be better stewards of the land and exactly. take care of our wetland. Yes, we, we want it to continue to thrive. Um, so what is important though about the wetlands other than it helping to, uh, you know, filter our water? I mean, <clears throat> are there different things that the plants themselves do to just really help our area? Definitely. Uh, so wetlands in Florida are kind of a unique habitat and they provide that habitat to some of wetland plants, mm -hmm. uh, for example, and we have three native Florida uh, wetland plant species present here today. This okay. is a uh, rose mallow. Um, this is a, a native Florida hibiscus and it produces oh. some very vibrant red flowers. Uh, we also have a dragon's tail, or excuse me, a lizard's tail. Oh. Um, and this is another Florida wetland plant, and this one has medicinal properties. It, it can actually be used as an anti-inflammatory if it's processed correctly. Oh, interesting. And, we also and Thomas, what do you have in front of you? Florida-headed pitcher plants. A pitcher plant, and is this, what kind of plant is this? Uh, they're carnivorous plants. And what does that mean? They eat bugs. Ooh, they eat bugs. <laughs> so kind of like, I think, I always picture the Venus fly traps, right? Yeah, I also have those. Okay, those are cool too. So how, yeah. does, how does this work then? So like, um, they make a smell that attracts bugs and then they go inside because they're attracted to the smell and then and then they trick the bugs and eat them. Oh, and that's where they get their nutrients. Yep. And, and uh, Stephen, you were telling me too, because I've seen a pitcher plant before, but I did, I'd never seen this part of it. So what is this? So these are the actual flowers and they're, oh. They haven't, they've been flowering this spring and it's kind of neat to see them. I haven't actually seen them flower yet. Yeah, I've never mm -hmm. seen that before. I've only seen the pitcher part of it. Uh, what adaptation, oh, there's another picture of it so you can see it in full bloom, that's beautiful. What adaptations to wetland plants, uh, what have they had to do to, to sustain in their environment? So one of the unique parts of wetlands is they're usually saturated. It's an area that's inundated for long enough to produce what we call hydric soils and wetland vegetation. Mm -hmm. And the plants have had to adapt to that because everything needs oxygen for the most part. So right. Wetland plants are actually capable of putting oxygen into the soil, and there's an, oh, so they kind of generate their own unique ecosystem within the soil environment, and it, it allows other things to live there that might not otherwise be. Yeah, able I was about to, to say, are you about to pull out a worm in there or something? <laughs> what are you looking at? <laughs> Just brought plants today. <laughs> and you said lizards tail, but we got no lizards here jumping out at us. Um, so how have the wetlands changed though over time on our first coast? So we've largely changed the hydrology. Uh, there's also so that means that the amount of water for how long the water is going to be there has been changed through okay. altered flow. We've changed a lot of the way the rivers flow. The St. Johns used to have, uh, I think it was Bartram that described it when he first went through here in the 1700s as having a mile long littoral zone. So that's the vegetative fringe on either side of the St. Johns River. Oh, okay, and I if, learned a new word. <laughs> <laughs> if you go to the St. Johns today, you can see there's not, you know, there is vegetation, there's a vegetative fringe, but there's not too much of one left. Yeah, unfortunately, we just keep like taking over, right? I mean, we just keep producing, producing and taking over the land, but we need to be able to give back then, right? We, we need to make it a synerg synergistic thing, not a parasite kind of situation <laughs> where we're just taking from the land and not giving back. So what can we do? So one of the big things, uh, well, the first and foremost, I'll say contact your extension office if you're wondering how you can be more Florida friendly. We have plenty of people that'll help you when your specific circumstance do that. Um, first and foremost would be don't apply fertilizer if you don't need to. Oh, really? Okay, and why is that? So a lot of the nutrients that get into the system, uh, Florida is, do you remember the word I told you? Wait, wait. Oligotrophic? Oh yeah, oligotrophic. So much of our wetlands are, were adapted to be oligotrophic and this okay. means that they have very low nutrients in them. It's mostly oh. rainwater, very low dissolved solids in the water, very low nutrient content. Okay. And once you apply the fertilizer, the runoff can get into that and it allows other species, including uh, exotics, to take over and it just extirpates species such as these that aren't capable of competing mm -hmm. in that enriched nutrient environment. So do a soil test before you're going to apply fertilizer. Okay. We always love our soil tests. Yes. Extension. <laughs> Plant Florida native species, uh, look up the Florida Friendly Program and start, uh, you know, take care of your yard in that way and you can help 
preserve these species and these ecosystems that they live in. Now, let me ask you this. Since these are wetland specific, can you have these in your backyard or does it have to be in like a wetland or marsh area or? So typically, yes, work? you need to plant them <laughs> in those areas. Uh, so I actually, so I grow these in pots because of that. And what we'll actually do is we have a little bucket. We kind of a, a secondary pot that keeps the water level up because these prefer to be wet at all times. OK, uh, I actually plant this one in my yard right mm -hmm. next to the air conditioned drain because it's always wet there. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> smart. So little tips like that. OK, so where can where can folks get that information, though, if they want a little bit more? Just go uh, to your website. Contact your extension agent. Yeah, no, we do have a website for the Duval County Extension Office and feel free to contact us and we'll help you any way we can. Wonderful. One to two. Oh, yeah. So one other thing I'd like to mention. Yeah, go for it. Um, we just set a date. Uh, I was oh. on here before promoting the North Florida Outdoor Expo. Uh, so February 24th at Cuscawilla Park in Alachua County, we're going to have a big exposition where you can learn how to enjoy Florida's natural resources sustainably and responsibly. Wonderful. And it's a great event. It'll be a lot of fun, good food. We're talking to some breweries, so we might even have beer out there. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so February 24 of 24. Correct. So lots of time to plan for that. Are you excited? Do you like yeah. that kind of stuff too? Yeah. All right, so how do you take care of this plant really quickly before we go? So um, you got to give it the soda rain water. You can't give it no more water because oh. they're not used to that. OK, good to so, know. So um, you don't always have to feed it because they, they, they catch bugs itself a lot. Right, so really just watering yeah. them for sure. Well, I don't even have to water the ones outside, really, because they get because it always is waning. So yeah. they always it's get like Florida, a right? Water. Let's be real. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for helping us, ex you know, to explain all of this today. It was very interesting, and I learned a lot. And wanting to give back to our our own land here too. So who wouldn't want that? Thank you guys again so much for joining us. Thanks for having us here. And if you'd like to see this interview again or get more information, just head to our website as well.